What punishment torture, real or fictional, at first seems light, but in reality is a living hell? Tickles. I'm not kidding. The Nazis periodically used tickles as torture. When tickling someone, you leave no trace. This torture was also used in places like mental asylums where patients were humbled, and the staff used to get as creative as they could. In particularly serious cases, tickles can lead to urination, vomiting, and loss of consciousness due to lack of air. Besides, it is easier for a torturing person to carry out such torture for a long time. Conscience is not tormented, because the victim involuntarily laughs. In general, it is easy to pretend that it is not such a terrible torture. Goat licking. In medieval times, the guilty person was tied with his feet between two wooden boards, and his feet were sprinkled with salt, or something salty. Then animal, usually a goat, was brought in to lick the person's feet. At first it seems to tickle, but the animal does not stop and continues to lick. The goat ended up licking the flesh and gradually reached the bones. When I was about 10 years old, I was sometimes made to stand in the corner of the hall and stare at the wall for hours. At the same time, my parents and siblings were sitting in the hall, kneeling on grains of rice. It used to be a common punishment in Italy to put children's knees on raw, hard chickpea, and in Hungary on corn. Sea salt brings the same horrible sensation if not worse. My knees were bleeding within an hour, holding my arms up for long periods of time. I remembered school, when I asked the teacher if I could go to the toilet. Or that moment when you finally get the courage to ask a question, and the teacher just doesn't notice you in your raised hand. Listen to the same song over and over, and then skip parts of the song. It's a form of torture that the CIA uses, and it's horrific. May I ask, what are the consequences after such torture? If the same song is played non-stop for several hours, you will get used to it. You will learn the lyrics. You will feel the rhythm and timing. You'll begin to notice even such insignificant things as individual drum beats. In general, gradually you will get completely used to the song. But if after three days the song starts playing again, but with some minor changes, you will immediately notice that something went wrong. Your brain will start to resist, because it's already very much used to the melody. Simply put, you'll start having panic attacks and so on. It's like seeing an abnormally large bruise on your body out of nowhere. You would start panicking too. Drowning torture, in case any of you guys don't know. In the early 2000s, there was a big debate about it. Some people called it torture. Others were like, what's the big deal? Water is poured on a person's face, and what? In general, yes. With this formulation, it seems to be a nonsense and not torture. It's just a matter of laying a person down and fixing him and pouring water on his face. What's the big deal? I remember when a conservative radio host had a brilliant idea. He wanted to prove live that it wasn't as bad as some people claim. He called his staff and told them to do a live broadcast of this water practice on it. And you know what? I respect this guy for doing that. He had a strong conviction and was willing to go through such bullying to try to prove his point. However, he only lasted 15 seconds and then passed out started wheeze and coughing in segments of five seconds. Finally, he was able to squeeze it out of him. This is really real torture. Then he asked for a break to recover. Good for him for admitting he was wrong, grabbing a block of ice with salt water in it and holding it for a while. This is called the salt ice test. People hold a block of ice for as long as they can stand it. And this often results in frostbite similar to second and third degree burns. What's more, the ice is essentially absorbed into the skin. So if you try to unclench your hand, it will rip off a piece of skin. You have to use warm water to get the ice off your hand. I did this challenge about 20 years ago, before this stuff was even popular on social media. It's so fucked. Modified. Given the popularity of my comment, I feel the need to warn you. By no means try this at home. Has anyone seen the episode of Black Mirror series called White Christmas? Imagine you're locked in a room with nothing. Like nothing at all. And all you have is endless boredom. How horrible! I don't remember which country used this kind of torture. I think it was Russia or Japan. But that's not the point. It was called the White Trial. You were dressed in white clothes, locked in a cell with white walls with no windows, and a completely white door. You had a white light fixture with a light bulb but no lampshade. The beds and linens were also white, and you were fed exclusively white rice, served in white bowls with white cutlery, and drank water pour in a white bowl. After a day or two, you would start hallucinating from the lack of visual stimulation. The beds and linens were also white. Just shit on the bed. Like generally smear your shit all over the place so you don't go crazy. Well, that's one way out. But then you have to put up with the stench of your own poop. Small price to pay for keeping your sanity. Exoneration for crimes by plea of insanity. Instead of a temporary prison sentence, you get indefinite incarceration. 
in a poorly funded horrible medical facility. Probably spend the rest of your life there. Yay! TED has an awesome article about a journalist interviewing a guy in a mental institution who just pretended to be crazy to avoid jail time. The guy says he lied to the court by pretending to be insane. He thought he would be able to pretend to be crazy for a while and then miraculously recover and go free. Nope. It turns out that convincing people that you're sane is a lot harder than convincing them that you're crazy. The guy started trying to convince people that he was sane, and psychiatrists diagnosed him psychopath. Because, of course, only a psychopath would try to convince people that he was sane. He started trying to do things to show he wasn't a psychopath, like repenting for his actions, which obviously only convinced the doctors that he was a psychopath who was trying to manipulate people by simulating emotions. The guy spent 14 years in a mental institution, even though he could have gotten as little as five years in prison for his crime. Being lawless in the old days. That is, if you were labeled a criminal. Today, we simply call anyone who regularly breaks the law a criminal. In the old days, however, being a criminal was a real punishment. If you were outlawed, it meant that you were literally outside the law and had no defense. If someone didn't like you, they could beat you up, rob you, torture you, or even kill you. When fairy tales call Robin Hood a lawless man, that's what they mean. It is not about romantic heroism and robbers, but about the situation in which a man was not entitled to any legal protection. The king, or whoever he commissioned, took your land from you, and anyone who wanted could take your stuff. Moreover, if someone didn't like you, you could be beaten to death, and the person would get nothing for it, and they could put a bounty on your head, and then people would hunt you down for money. What do you think would happen in this day and age if you lost the opportunity for a legal defense, and anyone who brought your head to court could demand a year's salary as a reward. Solitary confinement. One would think that isolating certain people might have a beneficial effect on society, but in fact it so corrupts a person's mind that many come out of it even worse than they were. I wouldn't wish that on even my worst enemy. It's strange to see that many shows about prison and documentaries use the punishment of confinement in the shoe so lightly. Like, oh you've done something wrong, made trouble for us, do a week in solitary confinement. However, in many countries, this punishment is banned because of its inhumanity. Since the question also dealt with fictitious torture, I'll mention the one in Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. It was copied a couple times in Black Mirror, and science fiction used the concept probably even before DS9. Basically, the point is time dilation. The idea is that time flows at a different rate in the real world than it does in some other world. So as a punishment, Miles O'Brien was chained to a chair for an hour and sedated. He dreamed that he was serving a 10-year prison sentence. Or maybe longer. But the point is that in his mind he was locked in a cell for years. In this dream he was sort of deprived of food and definitely had no socialization. Eventually he woke up and it's only been one hour in the real world. There's a short manga in the horror genre called The Long Sleep, written by Junji Ito. The plot also revolves around a similar concept. A man is hospitalized because his dreams are getting longer and longer every night. Gradually, his dreams become so long that he experiences a whole life in one night, and when he wakes up, he barely remembers what happened to him at all. Eventually, the dreams become thousands years long, and the situation becomes truly horrifying. Wildly recommended. Modified. I also recommend Stephen King's short story The Jaunt. The concept is the same. Some members lived entire years in a single moment, and it was really fucked up. When we went to Africa to visit, we learned that they have their own form of lethal injection for criminals in some places. It's administered through a snake bite. The viper would literally bite rapists and murderers in both ankles. After officers confirmed the bites, the perpetrators were sent home, under supervision, to spend their last day, days, with their families. Some people assume that this sounds like a more humane form of execution, but it isn't. Knees on salt. When I was 16 years old, my mom told me that if I continued to behave the way I do, she would punish me. I would be made to kneel on salt. Being a silly girl, I said that that was bullshit, not a punishment. It's just salt. But I continued to show my temper. Then my mother poured salt on the tile floor in the kitchen, and I had to stand knee-deep in salt for half an hour. Sristles scratched my knees and the salt burned the wounds. I am now 32 years old and still have scars on my knees. But I will get ahead of you and write, Yes, I know it was abusive behavior on my mother's part. My mother was pregnant at the time and was not in the best psychological state. My sister is now 16 years old and my mother has never even slapped her. Just recently my sister told me that in her opinion I was just a bad naughty child, since my mom was doing that to me. 
I told my mom about this conversation and she said, You weren't a bad kid. I just had a hard temper and I didn't know how to deal with it. Now I'm an adult with two children of my own. And when I heard her say that, I cried on the way home. In my mind, I knew I wasn't a bad kid. I rarely caused trouble, I never did drugs and so on. I just had a temper, but I didn't realize how heavy a weight was on my heart. I was the oldest of three children and I got the worst of it. I always blame myself for everything. Even when I finally overcame some problems and re-established a relationship with my mom, I still kept blaming myself. I didn't even realize how much I needed to hear her say those words. Our conversation took place three weeks ago, and I'm writing this now and crying again. Thank you so much for watching. In the comments below the video, write what punishment, torture, real or fictional at first seems light, but in reality is a living hell. And don't forget to watch our other episodes. Bye bye.